Custom Grow 420 is undoubtedly a GOAT and OG of the scene. From him being the first VTuber to ever hit 1 million subscribers, or him having the first cannabis related channel be recognized by the website, or how the greater audience on YouTube treat him as folklore. But what people don't know about is his dark past that has crime, violence, and juggalos involving the story. And in this video, I'm going to cover the whole thing. Custom Grow 420 would get his start in the early 2010s. And during this time, a lot of genres on YouTube were pretty bare boned, including the cannabis scene. But Custom Grow 420 would change all of this. Like a lot of other big content creators at that time, they all shared one character trait. High energy. And Custom Grow 420 would embody this to the fullest. Yeah, yeah. What up, YouTube, YouTube? What up? Yoga look coming at ya. For Custom Grow 420. This 18 number channel designed for cannabis patients and adults. Yeah, yeah. What up, YouTube, YouTube? What up? Yoga look coming at ya. For custom grow 420, this 18-over channel designed for cannabis patients and adults. All right, man. In this one, 10-foot bait bag, world record. In this video, Joel Haraki, or more known as Custom Grow 420 online, would get the attention of the viewer with his high-energy videos and his outlandish smoking. And because of this, he would gain a fan base on the platform very quickly. In just three years, he would gain a following of a half a million subscribers, which is still pretty crazy for today. Custom Grow 420 gaining a massive audience on the platform very quickly would get him the attention of people in and outside the cannabis community. He would be featured by Vice as the number one creator of the week, which is pretty big for a VTuber. And he would also feature on some of the biggest channels on YouTube. And even though he was being clowned on these YouTube channels, it was still pretty big that he was being recognized by such big content creators like Filthy Frank, the H3H3 podcast, and Moist Critical. It shows you how big of a content creator Custom Grow 420 is. But during this time, Custom Grow 420 wasn't no stranger to controversy. From having public arguments with his wife on live stream. Fuck! I fucking love my fucking wife, man. Oh, no, 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 To have an argument with other VTubers, but I think the controversy he's most known for is the story that got covered by TMZ. Custom Girl 420 and a couple of his friends would go to an abandoned bridge in Washington and record a video. They were like smoking around the edge of the bridge and that kind of stuff, just doing dumb stuff. And they thought it was going to be a good video, but what they did not know about was the backlash and the coverage this story was going to get. No, don't.
Custom Grow 420 would receive heavy fines and community service, but would not get jail time for this. If you've been watching Custom Grow 420 for a while, you know this is not the start of his criminal career. You know about his dark side. His past. This story would take place in 2006, way before Custom Grow 420 was a thing. A young Joe Haragi would get into ICP, Insane Clown Posse, and he would also find other people around him that was into the same thing. And just like many other fans of the ICP stuff, they would start referring to themselves as Juggalos. And now, most Juggalos are just fans of the culture, fans of the style, fans of the music, but Custom Grow 420 and his friends took it to a whole new level. On July 19, 2006, Custom Grow 420 and the same group of friends would go to Silicon Park to get drunk, but the night would turn for the worst. They would go on a crime spree and would end up with 23 different victims that either got robbed or attacked. And the news report is even more crazy. Now, in this news report, they don't go super in depth what happened that night, but they do summarize what happened. They sent some victims to the hospital with injuries that included at least one broken jaw, one broken nose, and a broken face. One girl was apparently ordered to take off her pants, but she managed to escape. There were five other people in this news report, but one of the names were Joel Adam Haraki. This case is one of many that would help the Juggalos be recognized as an organized gang. And because there were so many stories coming out about Juggalos and the crazy crimes that they were committing, it would get national coverage all over America. Real life mayhem, some believe, is motivated by a certain sound and stagecraft. The musical genre, often appealing to teens, is called horrorcore. And there is no bigger name than the insane clown posse. But while this pair may just rap about acts of savagery and violence, some of their devoted fans are living them. Hence the question, should these artists share in the blame? I asked them. Because of that crazy night, Custom Grow 420 would be charged with three counts of first degree robbery and six counts of second degree assault, which would get him 41 months in state prison and he would have to pay heavy fines. Now, Custom Grow 420 has talked about what happened that day, but most of it is not public. But there is one clip where he talks about what happened. Caitlin Ortega, you know it. What happened with the hatches and machetes at Stillicum? Um, we went out to the park with the homies to go get drunk, and then a couple of my homies ran up on some other people and robbed them, and I went up and backed them up. Uh, we did a pretty crazy robbery. It was me, six co-defendants. We had like 23 victims. Ran around. Friends beat up a lot of people. Robbed them. Some people got their jaws broke. Some people got hit in the face with machetes. Uh, some people got airlifted out of there to Harborview Medical Center with broken jaws to get wired up. It was a horrible, horrible thing. It was crazy. But I was young, and I was involved with this fucking hardcore fucking... This gang of juggalos, we ran the town, and uh, I was really down at that time. And anything that my homies were doing, I had their back. So I backed them up, and then uh, we all got fucking, we all got cooked, man. They came looking for us, everybody went on the run for months, started getting us one at a time. Fucking people were fucking taking off, and they fucking got us all. We ended up all getting booked, all got charged. Uh, my first. My charges were nine robberies in the first degree and six assault twos. That was for my charges. And when it was all fucking done and over with, I ended up pleading guilty to two robberies in the first degree. Took a strike and went to fucking prison. Got a 41 month uh, prison sentence with a paid lawyer. Uh, and I still ended up having to do 41 months. Some people got like uh, one dude got 11 years, 13 years, nine years, seven years. Uh, and the one kid who snitched, he still got 31 months. Now, I can confidently say this is probably one of the darkest stories I've ever heard in WeTube history, but you never know. There could be more crazy stuff out there. But let me know what you think about this video. 
Until next time, peace.